Hello watch lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Theon and today we not only have a pretty cool video but also a major announcement coming a little bit later on. Let's first look at the watch. It's a pretty simple Seiko and not uh, very valuable nor expensive but it uh, means a lot to Ray the owner. He actually got the watch as a high school graduation gift from his parents back in 1970. So this uh, caliber is a bit odd in that uh, it's not possible to manually wind it. And the watch was not running when I got it. And uh, Ray says that rotor is probably loose. So we'll uh, see about that later. You can see the dial uh, has this beautiful blue color. And we see that the date changes as it should. And the same thing with the weekday. But what I notice here is that the crown is very difficult to turn. So it's probably in need of a service. Cosmetically, uh, the case uh, should be a little bit different looking. It should have a circular brushed face, brushed uh, horizontally brushed sides, and the bevel there should be uh, polished. The bracelet is not the original one. The original one was actually destroyed uh, in an accident in an aluminum recycling plant. So uh, Ray got some molten aluminum on the bracelet. But it looks quite similar. And it's also got quite a lot of wear, so we're going to do something about that also. We well, hear something definitely shaking inside the watch. Yeah, that rotor is not really secured. You see, it's not actually engaged with the winding system. And if I screw it down a little bit, then it does engage with the winding system, but it's still got some slack. Seiko has a bit of a reputation for making watches that cannot be wound with a crown. And the reason that uh, works quite well for them is uh, the winding system. We can see that here with those uh, two kind of legs wrapped around that one wheel. Those two legs are what's called the magic lever. And it's an ingenious and very, very uh, clever system. Gonna look at it a little bit more detail in a short while. Let's just first get the hands and the dial off. We see the dial does have some damage to it and it's not really anything we can do about that. And of course, uh, Ray wants to keep the watch original, so we're not going to replace the dial either. This uh, movement actually has a lot of really cool uh, solutions, I think. This uh, quick set of the date is uh, one of them. I think in general, uh, those who've uh, watched a few of my videos know that I am a big uh, Psycho fan. I think they uh, really produce good value for money. Maybe a little bit less nowadays actually, they started charging uh, a lot more for uh, simple watches, but uh, still. And of course at the higher end of watchmaking, uh, they also produce some fantastic watches. Like Creedor and of course Grand Seiko. And yeah, I always get a lot of fan mail or comments whenever I make a Seiko video. And the reason is uh, my pronunciation of Seiko. So I'm saying psycho, not psycho, just so uh, that is clear. And the reason is uh, quite simple. Uh, in Norwegian, the syllable sai is actually used a lot. And it's written the same way. And sometimes written a little bit differently, but still the same sound. And Norwegian is actually phonetically very uh, similar in a lot of ways to Japanese. Except for that one, I suppose. For instance, we pronounce uh, other Japanese names pretty much like the Japanese would, like uh, Honda, like uh, Toyota, uh, Daihatsu. So, uh, apart from that, I think uh, the pronunciation is pretty good. And I'm way too old now to change my ways, so I'm going to stubbornly keep saying Psycho. Not psycho, but psycho. 
let the comments flow. I'm a married man, so I can take whatever you throw at me. The barrel in this uh, watch is uh, very thin, and uh, the best way to open it is uh, with something uh, very sharp, like a uh, knife's edge. Oh, there we have the messages coming in. Why do you say psycho? It's not psycho. <laughs> we see uh, quite some dirt all around here. And that mainspring is very dirty. Last thing we're going to do before putting all the parts in the cleaning machine is to just clean the pivots on the wheels a little bit. And then we can put all the stuff into these baskets. Well, as the astute observer has noticed before, I'm not actually putting all the stuff into these uh, baskets. Some uh, very delicate parts I uh, clean separately. And I don't always put the screws through the cleaning machine either. So I'm going to leave those behind. The rest goes in. All right, while we're waiting for the laundry to finish, let's uh, turn our attention to the case. We're going to first take the bezel off so we can get the crystal off because it's held down with the bezel. Quite some uh, rust underneath there. And yeah, it's been a while. So after cleaning the case, we're going to restore the finish to uh, the original finish from what I have uh, found. It can be quite uh, challenging to uh, find out what the original finish actually was. Because this watch has been uh, worn a lot and uh, the original finish is very, very faded. Let's get back to that later. Let's now uh, first clean uh, the case parts in the ultrasonic. Now, for those unfamiliar with the sound of the ultrasonic, you might want to turn your uh, volume up. No, oh, sorry, down, down. So I also cleaned the bracelet in the ultrasonic. And uh, then we can uh, take the case parts and the bracelet to the polishing room. It's actually very noisy in there, but I turned down the sound quite a lot. The noise is from the uh, extraction system because it's really not uh, good for your uh, lungs or for your anything to have all that dust and stuff inside that room. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to highly polish the middle sections of the bracelet and then we're going to brush the rest of the bracelet so as you can imagine that's quite a lot of fiddly work so let's speed it up a little bit huh you're working too slowly man and one of the key reasons why it's difficult uh, to know what the original finish of an old watch was is that uh, very few watchmakers actually have the equipment to make flats flat. They might have some uh, polishing wheels, some felt wheels, 
but uh, a lot of uh, watches have flats and sharp edges and they get uh, destroyed by uh, felt wheels. So I have this uh, lapping machine. So I'm going to use that for the flats on the case, on the bezel, on the case back. So I use a sharpie to uh, color the flat that we want to uh, polish. And then we test that surface against uh, the disc. And with a few adjustments, at some point we will then rub off all the red. And then we know we have uh, the correct angle. Can be a bit fiddly, but very important to get it right, of course. Otherwise, we're going to create a new flat. Oh, and there we have it. See that little worn mark there. So then we can go ahead and polish that surface. And then we simply repeat uh, that process uh, with all other uh, angled surfaces, uh, like the case back, for instance. The bevel between uh, the side of the case and the face should be uh, polished as well, and it is a flat. So we're going to use the lapping machine for that one as well. In general, most manufacturers will uh, have different uh, finishing on adjacent surfaces. So if one surface is uh, polished, then the adjacent surface uh, might be uh, horizontally brushed or vertically brushed. And then the one next to that again might be polished again. And then you can have uh, sunburst, for instance. Because uh, the whole thing is that what makes something look expensive or look exclusive is the contrast. Because once you have the contrast, that also shows that uh, some effort has been put into uh, making this case or this watch. A case that has only one finish looks kind of cheap. Almost regardless. So we're over on the mops. On the left one I have a very mild uh, polishing uh, compound. And the right one is uh, high luster. So putting high luster on uh, that bevel. And I also did it already on uh, the middle sections, the middle pieces of uh, the bracelet. And then we're also going to do the same on the case back and on the bezel. For the case sides, we're going to give it a horizontal brushing. So we use the same trick there. Unfortunately, uh, I messed up the camera angle, but uh, you just have to trust that uh, I did it. So I put some uh, protective uh, tape on uh, the center pieces of uh, the bracelet. That's uh, what looks golden right now. But that protects uh, those parts, so then we can brush the rest of uh, the bracelet. Last uh, thing then is to uh, put on the brushed uh, finish on the case face. I also put on the same protective tape there on uh, that um, polished bevel that we just uh, did, and also the brushed sides. Sure. Well, most of the time I think my wife would uh, take that as a positive, but... Last thing then is to put on uh, the brushed finish on the case back. These Psycho watches uh, should have a circular brushing on uh, the case back. And that's something you also see uh, quite a lot sinned against. People simply making them shiny. All right, with the case uh, ready for the movement, uh, let's uh, start putting all those pieces back together. Actually, not a lot of pieces in this movement. Quite uh, nice in that way. I must admit I'm a bit tired as I'm uh, doing this voiceover. My daughter comes to our bed pretty much every night. She's uh, seven years old. And last night she didn't feel so well. So ultimately she uh, went to the bathroom to perhaps uh, vomit. 
And uh, what she found there was uh, the cat playing with a mouse. So obviously uh, Daddy Superhero had to come in and uh, catch the mouse and save it from the cat. So our cat is an extreme hunter. I've never seen anything like it. It's a small female cat and probably four, three, four nights out of seven in a week. She's caught either a mouse or a lizard or a bird, something. It's crazy. I remember seeing this uh, TV show Dexter. This uh, guy who killed the uh, bad guys, basically. And our cat is using our bathroom as kind of her uh, slaughterhouse. It's like uh, every second morning I come in there, it's like a bloodbath. And you can just see that something horrible went down there, you know. Anyway. We uh, are going to oil the jewels. And these are tiny little things. We're going to put a tiny little bead of oil in the center of these uh, end stones. That is for the shock setting for the watch. Put a little bit of oil in the center of each stone. By the way, if you uh, like uh, this video, make sure to click uh, like and subscribe. That way you'll uh, get notified when uh, I upload new videos. So we're going to get uh, the shock settings back into uh, the balance and uh, also on uh, the other side. And these springs on these cycles can be uh, somewhat tricky. So I like uh, using two tweezers to uh, help guide them into uh, the slots. And yes, they're also extremely pingable. All right, with the balance oscillating freely, we can then start rebuilding uh, the movement. It is a pretty simple and straightforward movement, so not a lot of challenges uh, with it. And since the movement cannot be wound manually, that also actually makes it a little bit simpler. So we're not going to spend a lot of time going through uh, the different parts of uh, building the movement up. We will spend a little bit more time talking about the magic lever. I have mentioned this uh, before, but uh, the magic lever is uh, Psycho's uh, proprietary uh, technology. And it's simple, genius and very efficient. So the way it works is that you have this uh, off-center uh, cam here, on this little wheel. And when we put that lever on top there, whenever that wheel rotates those two legs on the magic lever, will either push or pull onto an intermediary wheel and then uh, that uh, winds the ratchet wheel. If simplicity is genius, then uh, whoever came up with the magic lever is a true genius. Very few moving parts, very cheap to make and very efficient. And Psycho watches are indeed uh, really efficient watches, very high quality. They don't care so much about uh, finishing uh, the movement to a very high standard. But that also isn't the most important for uh, most people. So let's see how the magic lever works. We see that when we rotate that wheel, that uh, off-center uh, cam makes the legs of the magic lever push or pull that intermediary wheel and thus uh, wind the ratchet wheel. So in my opinion, uh, clearly the best uh, invention when it comes to automatic winding. So for those of you uh, with an excellent long-term memory, you might remember that about uh, 19 minutes ago, I said that there would be a major announcement in this video. 
And uh, for those who have been following the channel, it's probably not a surprise. I will be opening for channel memberships. Thank you, thank you. That's so kind of you. I'll make a separate post outlining the details a little bit more. And uh, of course, all the details will be available on the channel as well. There will be a join button. And when you click the join button, you can then see what the different membership uh, tiers are and what they offer you. In short, there are three tiers. What is common for all the tiers is, of course, that they have exclusive uh, content. That content uh, will be, uh, for instance, how to do different uh, types of repairs, uh, how you can identify movements uh, you don't know, uh, where you can find parts, that kind of thing. And uh, ranging between the tiers is also uh, certain levels of uh, personal advice for me. Uh, Q&A sessions, even having uh, me work on uh, watches that uh, you own. So yeah, I hope that will be uh, exciting for uh, some of you. It will be a big boost for the channel. Of course, also mean a lot more work for me, but uh, it's work I like doing anyway, so uh, I'm happy with that. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to uh, check the channel. I'll also make an introduction video to uh, let everyone know about the different benefits. But for now, time to make this watch tick again. And seeing that balance start up is always satisfying. Some might even say it's uh, the best thing in a watchmaker's life. We're going to demagnetize the movement and then we're going to see how it runs now. Psychos generally have a much lower amplitude than uh, the Swiss brands. So a 240 something is, uh, is not bad. Which is also not fully wound, so that uh, will probably give it a little bit more amplitude. But with uh, correcting uh, the beat error and the rate, we get a very decent performance from this watch. Psycho is quality. All right, let's uh, get uh, the calendar works in place. As noted uh, during the disassembly, it's a really cool uh, way of uh, having the date quick set. And that is of course made possible by uh, not having uh, two pinions there, the sliding pinion and uh, the winding pinion as they typically have. So it's actually the next morning, got a little bit late as I was working on this video and uh, with a new day comes a new voice and uh, it's the Barry White voice. Old Man River, kind of cool. So my uh, son is uh, 10 years old now and uh, the other day we started uh, sort of talking uh, about what he wants to do when he grows up. Because the thing is, uh, the way it works in Switzerland is that um, after I think it's 12 uh, years in school, then they kind of have to start thinking about uh, specializing already. And just to clarify, 12 years, uh, the first two years is kind of like uh, kindergarten. So they start school at four years old, but the first two years aren't really school, if you will. So it's only the third year that they start reading and uh, writing. Speaking of reading and writing, uh, we have to take out uh, the loom in the hands. And no, there's no actual relation between reading and writing and uh, removing the loom, but uh, my mind works in mysterious ways. So you might uh, ask yourself, well, you might ask yourself a lot of things. I, I'm not, not going to be the judge of that. 
But one thing you might ask yourself is uh, why remove the loom in both hands? If only one hand is uh, cracked, because the loom in uh, our hand was perfectly fine. And uh, the reason is that uh, you, of course, want the loom in both hands to look the same. And if you uh, change only one hand, then it will be different from the other. Might not be super visible, but uh, it will be different. So that's the reason. So we make uh, sure that this uh, loom is uh, very liquid. That makes it uh, flexible enough that it's going to cover that little cutout in the hands. And then we can put uh, the dial back on. It's a bit of a shame that uh, the dial is uh, a little bit damaged, but it still looks good. So here I turned uh, the crown so that uh, the date just flips over and then we know it should be midnight. And then we can put uh, the hour hand at 12 at that point. And that means that the date will not flip over exactly at midnight. That's just not possible. Or if it does happen, it's a coincidence. But we should make it uh, flip over very close to midnight. So we can check that after we put uh, the minute hand on. We're also checking that the hands do not touch each other without uh, an adult in the room. And that's pretty close to midnight, so uh, we're going to be happy with that. Then lastly, we're going to put on the second sand. So I'm not sure what happened to the dial. Most likely uh, someone was trying to get the hands off or something like that. and. Uh, well, basically just dented the dial. It's a bit of a shame, but uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And of course, uh, a watch is a sentimental thing, so keeping it original is more important than uh, making it uh, flawless. Let's just check then how the date and the weekday jump over. And then the weekday. And yes, that was the actual sound of the weekday uh, jumping. Just slow down a little bit. The last thing we're going to do then is to uh, polish uh, the crystal. It is the original crystal and uh, it is in an okay shape. Apart, of course, from being very worn. So uh, we're just going to take out the scratches. We do that by um, using a few different grits again. And then finally, we're going to use some polywatch. Speaking of uh, polywatch, uh, I was talking a little bit about uh, the Swiss education system. And um, my son kind of has to start thinking about what he wants to do. And that made me think as well. So I was thinking, um, just hypothetically, of course, if you're a sadist, there are two traditional career paths, which would be uh, dentistry and uh, working in customs. But uh, there are, of course, other options as well. And for those uh, of us who are not sadists, and uh, hopefully that's a majority, there are more options. So the moral of the story is uh, don't be a sadist. Okay, I'm not really sure where I was going with that, but... Uh, we uh, gotten all the way back to putting uh, the rotor back on. I am going to try to source a new rotor for this movement. But we'll see if it works with the old one for the time being. Then we're putting in the new gasket. And with that, uh, the watch actually did pass a three bar uh, pressure test. So uh, another kudos to uh, Psycho. Quite impressive. And just to be clear, I do screw the case back on much tighter than you see uh, in the video.
before seeing the watch on the wrist, I just want to remind everyone that at uh, vintagewatchservices.eu you will always find more than 100 beautiful vintage watches. And as a YouTube subscriber, you can use the coupon code on the screen to get 10% off. And there we have it. Race old watch, made to look a little bit better. I didn't take out all the marks, it's just too deep. I will show in a later video how we can fill metal. But I think this looks a lot better. If you like this video, then uh, click like and subscribe. Then you'll uh, get to see more of these uh, kinds of videos. And keep an eye out for the membership options I'm going to open this week. I'll be back with another video shortly. Until then... Ta-ta! <laughs>